everybody, it's Debbie. Welcome. You're at your home, your happy place. Welcome to all the new people. You guys, I am overwhelmed. There's close to 1,000 new people in a week. Thank you, Liz, at Traditions by the Seasons. Um, I hope you enjoy it here. Things are typically just decorating, but it'll probably change up a little bit this year. When I started this, you'll see in my intro, it says lifestyle, entertaining, organizing, and decorating. Um, but since it's a new house, I've really concentrated on decorating. And seasonal decor takes a lot of time for a house this size. So it's left very little time for other videos. But today's a different one. It is decorating. It's just a little different. Um, so today I'm going to take you through the process of wallpapering. Um, a powder room that I thought I was going to get done in one day. It took three days of work um, and I didn't finish what I wanted to. I'm going to pop an inspiration picture that before we built this house, I spent countless hours on, I mean, I started like, I think house.com has, um, it's very much like Pinterest in the way you could save stuff. So I have all these like idea books there and you can get inside some gorgeous homes there so I know I have a picture either on Pinterest or um, in that idea book from where I got my inspiration for this bathroom which was well before we built the house and I mean literally I picked out things based on that so um, the bad news is the inspiration included my ceiling, and I still intend to do the ceiling. I just don't think I personally can do it. A bath, a powder room is so small, and to be up there and get all the way across, I think I would need some kind of scaffolding or something, and I don't have that. So I think I might just see if I can hire that part out because they would probably have the equipment. It's, it's probably three pieces of wallpaper. So somebody, it may be too small of a job, but today I'm going to take you through the process of what I did and why I, I mean, I use, I use pre-pasted wallpaper. This came in all the ways that you could possibly get wallpaper. So if you're scared to do something, if you um, are afraid of pattern and color, which I'm not, and you're going to find this is crazy wild, most of you will go well, this is what I think always. I think I'm good. I think I do stuff and I think people are going to go, oh my gosh, I could never live with that. It's just way too crazy. It's way too busy. Well, I've had, you know, I'm old enough to have gone through the wallpaper phase of the 80s and early 90s where every single room in my house was wallpapered. I also realized that in that time, a lot of my patterns were almost just very patternless. It was almost like painting. And so um, I want to see design on my wall. And uh, we have tall, tall ceilings. And so I'm so excited to share with you what we're doing today. And then I'm, I will say this before you even get started because I didn't say it while we were doing it. And that is, sorry, I'm looking at the wallpaper, is that whatever the color of your background of your wallpaper, you may wish to get that matched. You can take it to a paint store and get the background matched and paint your wall first. Typically back in the time when I used to wallpaper, uh, your, pat, your wallpaper sheets would butt up against each other. And I often used Waverly. That's a very, it's still out there. So they didn't overlap. And what could happen often is if your paper's very wet, there could be shrinkage and you could get these little lines down the wall, which is horrible. Um, and coming in afterwards with paint is not a good idea. So that's just a trick. I've, I've been very, because I had to match and do that for so long, I got really good at it. Um, I use spoon flour for a lot of my wallpaper now. I think the only one uh, will be the one that I do in my laundry room. It's not spoon flour, so I bet it doesn't overlap, but spoon flour overlaps about an inch, which is kind of crazy. Um, but let's get on with the video. I'm just going to go through how I do it, and then at the end, I'll see you again. 
today is a day I've been looking forward to setting aside for, and things just happened where a lot of stuff got canceled, and so I've got the day to do this, and I'm hoping I can get it done. So I'm going to share what we're getting ready to do today. I'm not going to have you watch me do everything, but I'll take some photos along the way. We're wallpapering. I um, haven't wallpapered now for about a year. Uh, I did the wallpapering in the butler's pantry and in the dining room, but the dining room's not done and neither is the butler's pantry. Um, but this will take less time than those. So not so much cutting. This is going in the powder room and we have the um, board and batten up about this tall. And while it is a really high ceiling, um, it's not a very big room. So uh, this is what I'm going to do and tell you a little bit about this print. I found this um, accidentally. I was watching another YouTuber about a year ago and I asked some of you and you guys, some of you told me. Now I'm going to probably get the wrong person because I follow so many. I don't have time to watch everybody. I watch people that connect with me like... I love um, Becca at Adventures in Decorating and Rebecca Fraser, you, you know her from Canada, and um, of course Liz. Um, so those are some of, the, oh, and T at Paradise Point, and I don't want to miss anybody, but those are people that talk back to me when I'm on their channel, and so I feel a connection and I really love watching that. Doesn't mean I don't watch other people, I do. Um, I don't always comment on everybody though. It does take time to do that. So this person was using a peel and stick version of this and it might not have been as big of a print. So you can get this in different sizes. You can get it in peel and stick, you can get it in pasted, you can get it in pre-pasted or non-pasted. And so um, I think she was putting it in the back of some um, bookcases and I just fell in love with it. It was around the time when I was discovering I like chinoiserie. And I had gone ahead and found the print on pillows on Amazon and I had those in my house a year ago. And I was doing a whole lot of blue and white. So sorry about the dog. There's a lot going on here. She wasn't even, she was upstairs. I don't know what she was barking about. Nobody's up there. Okay, anyway, um, somehow I ended up finding this accidentally then on Spoonflower. And Spoonflower does not sponsor this video and has nothing to do with it. I get no commission. Um, although I think you might be able to buy this on Amazon, but I'm not sure. Um, however, all the wallpaper you've seen in my house so far has that's on the walls has been from Spoonflower. I've been very happy with them. And of course, when you go to Spoonflower, you can get matching fabric. So I also have towels. They're um, a cloth towel, not a, they're not a very absorbent towel, but I use them in the powder room as well. So you can have napkins made, tablecloths, I mean, uh, bedspreads, everything. So, um, and you can actually design your own if you're gifted or if you've got, if you're in a, like I'm in Creative Fabrica and I'm in Kittle. If you're in some of these places where you can get things and you have a commercial license to use them, which I do. Um, and you don't even need a commercial license if you're just going to make it for yourself. You can design your own wallpaper. And print it, which is why I didn't do this room yet. I was going to do my own design. But when I found this, I just fell in love. So that's what we're doing today. This one is pre-pasted. So I need to measure, cut, wet it, let it book, and then hang. And it's so, so easy, you guys. All right. And before we get started, um, I'll tell you a little bit about other things. Well, I did fix my hair today. It's just, I put it up. So that's why it looks a little like I didn't do it. My top, I think it's still available at my daughter's store. Um, so I'll click that below. It's so cute. It's so funny because I wore the dress for Easter that I did my Easter home tour in. And it looks a lot like this top. We went to pick up my mother-in-law and she was wearing this top and I had brought it in case I wanted to put on pants. So that was just funny. Anyway, it's a, a nice long one. 
I can't, let me see if I can get back far enough. Did I? There you go, I think. So I love it. And you, oops. Of course you can wear it buttoned. I just like stuff like this. Also, I told you about once a month, I will show you um, if I have some new Cenegence product. And Cenegence is a makeup company that I, you, you have to order it from somebody. That's all I know. I've just used the lip scents for seven years, so nobody was selling it. So I decided to become a distributor. So you're an independent distributor and I don't know if it's considered commission that you make off of it. It's probably how it works. Um, so anyway, uh, and there's usually a coupon uh, if it's your first time shopping. So there's a link to my website, but today, um, this just came in. So this is uh, Lip Sense, and this is their uh, lip stain, which is what I use. Uh, this one is uh, Shimmer Summer. And um, what you do is just, if this, this is what it is. I know you'd think, oh, this wouldn't last very long. It lasts forever. <laughs> it really does. Uh, you put, put it on, and then you let it dry for about a minute, and you put on another layer. They like you to put on three. I typically only put on two now, but um, you you put on that, and then when that dries, you follow up with, at least with this, they have a matte one that doesn't require a gloss, but uh, the others you put a gloss on. And so the gloss I have here is Coconut Guava, and um, I don't really taste anything, but I think I smelled it when I first put it on. So they're very close, but you can totally change the look of this by the type of gloss you put on. And... Uh, I, I mean, if I can put a link to these, I will, but I'll definitely put, you know, the name of the two. And of course, you can shop the website anytime and it's linked there and it's by website. So I thank you for that. All right. I'm going to start getting my um, tools out and get ready to measure and get started. And I'll just take you along on the way. I hope you enjoy the video. So here's the room we're doing. There is a curved wall in here. And as you can kind of see, I mean, I never give you that kind of a close up. I mean, this is really not painted. Um, this is, this is very, this is lacquered here. And um, when they did this, um, I don't know how thick these are. I don't know if that's a, about a half an inch maybe. Um, and, but they're also curved. So that this is a, a lot of work in our house with the curved uh, wood that we did. And then we had them put, put a drop molding down. So I have, I'm gonna have this really nice wide border at the top. And then on, I had have every intention of wallpaper in the ceiling. So because of that, we also have yet another um, molding too actually there so I think it's going to be pretty cool when it's done and so what am I also if you're if you want to try something like this I'm sure there's plenty of YouTube videos on how to um, you'll always want to start in the least conspicuous corner so just close the door and this will be my least conspicuous corner. So this will be my first piece. Unfortunately, it's gonna get a lot cut off. This is where you hate it because you're doing so much waste. Uh, you have to cut that piece and forget that you're cutting out the entire door. And then we'll match and match and match and go all the way around. Okay, um, I am using my table um, you, you're going to need a large flat surface. A lot of people will put sawhorses up and some plywood. Um, I've always used a table um, or a countertop. But countertops are typically too high for me. I'm not that tall. So this is great. Um, I'm going to protect the table with plastic paint sheeting, um, which my husband has got to find for me. I don't know where it's at. And then I'm just going to show you some of my basics. Number one, you want to wipe your walls down. So I um, damp a sponge and I'm doing that. Number two, take out any nails or things like that that you have extruding. And then if you have to fill holes, now's the time. So get something, some quick drying spackle and, um, you know, use a spackle uh, knife 
I really put it on thin and scrape it right away so there is so minimal sanding, but you're going to want to sand it. And I do have a little sander out there. Um, all right. And then, of course, you want to unscrew any lights, mirrors, things like that, that you, if you're going to have to work around it, you have to work around it and cut around it, but otherwise. Um, so here are some of the more important things. When you are using what I'm going to be doing, which is pre-pasted, I'll be wetting this. So I'm going to get a bucket and I am with water, warm water, and I am going to just take it and splash it around. Um, I might use this sponge, but you have to be careful to not get start start pressing because if you're pressing you're pulling you're stretching your your wallpaper is very um it could it could stretch out of shape number one but number two you might be just wiping your glue off um, i also have this really soft brush that would be good for just spreading the water around so i don't know which i'll do and then if you're doing um non-pasted and you have to paste you do need a stiffer brush like this and so you'll be grabbing the paste out of a big bucket and, and dumping it and spreading it around. Um, you're going to have to have a level of some kind. Of course, you need a measuring. You know, I use a tape measure, but so I've, I grabbed a few levels. I'll probably be using this one, but this is probably a really nice one as well. The biggest thing is when you're doing especially long verticals, lines, it, let's just say, here we, here we are, let's just say I get off, I mean, not even that much, just the littlest. If I don't fix that, um, by the time I, and I keep matching my seams, by the time I get around to the other side, depending on the size of the room, the pattern could be that crooked. So you just don't want to do that. Okay, so my first piece, I caught, cut 51 inches, and then I do have an extra half inch or something at the bottom where the border was. And I took some warm water and just doused it, and then I took this really uh, light brush and kind of spread it around, and then you fold it on itself. So I'll open it up so you can see. So there's, I folded it on itself. The edges are meeting in the middle here, and that's called booking. And you do that for, you know, about four to five minutes, and then it should be ready enough to hang. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, this is my first piece, which I had to lose that whole area in there. Um, and here's something really important to understand. I shut the door and I pulled it away from the wall, so I got to get up there and fix that real quick. Um, I used a level. You want to use the level on the edge you're matching, not your corner. Corners can be extraordinarily crooked. Yeah, this is a very, this is a straight edge of wallpaper. Look at it start. It's barely in the corner here. By the time you get to the top, it is sticking out. So corners are not straight in this house at all. And, you know, there's no, there's no curved wall right here, so I don't even know what the excuse is. But, all right, I've got to get that piece tucked back in up there, and then I'm going to let this dry. Uh, I had to cut a little bit into that corner so I could get it down, but it cuts very poorly when it's damp. So see all that? That's glue. So when you bring the wallpaper down over stuff, you're going to get glue all over your woodwork and so i've got a wet sponge i'm going to wipe that off with and then i have cut this one all the way down here and then at the ceiling i've left the corner for now and i will tell you a little bit about the seam in a minute 
Okay, one thing I don't love about Spoonflower is they overlap. So I'm gonna see if I can pull this down just a tad. I hate to, but I want you to see. Look at that. That's like an inch. I don't know, maybe it's more. But you're matching a pattern. And so they make it so that you, you can't see my seam there, but you don't butt the seams up, which is the way I learned to wallpaper. And um, this, I mean, it, it works okay because I've never had a problem yet, but I think sometimes it can show through your wallpaper that you got like a something underneath each seam, if that makes sense. Okay, well, I'm going to let this one sit a little bit longer before I trim it up. And then hopefully this, at least this wall here, should be fairly easy because there's no cutting for me to do. I'll at least get one strip in. And then over here, I'll get another strip in before I get around the mirror. And then that's going to take me a little bit of time. One of the things, since I just said something I don't like, I will say something I do like. You can buy these in different lengths. So I am not buying a roll that goes all the way from there to my floor. I was able to buy, I think they go maybe, I don't know, maybe eight to 10 inches longer than what I need. So that saves you money. So I will say that. <laughs> okay, I'm only on my third piece. I'll tell you what, typically <laughs> when you're starting, if you have to start at a, at a place where you have to cut, especially as much as I had to cut off there, it's really hard. Um, in the dining room, I, I didn't even have to cut except, you know, the length so far. Once I get to the windows, it's going to be like this, cutting around. So, and once you get over here, no more is it going to matter a whole lot if that is level because I have to match seams much more. Up there, I was only matching, you know, five, six inches up there. Now I have to match a seam all the way down. So it really does matter that I'm matched. And in the end, if somebody studies it, every wallpaper has some kind of pattern that you can follow. And... For example, I can see that this is off here. Now, it may not be on the other side because it was cut, but see where that monkey's hand is there? And then look up here, we have more monkey hand showing. It's just a tad, but um, eventually it would get worse and worse. See the top of the monkey umbrella up there? Um, it will get worse if I don't stay level. So it would be real easy for someone to go, yeah, well, that's a little off. Right now, I think I'm doing okay. Um, you do need to um, take one of these and go over it to get the bubbles out. I forgot about that, and I was up here, and I'm like, oh, wow, there's a lot of air bubbles in, in here, which I think I got them all out. Um, but I usually do uh, something like this with it. You know, I don't, I don't typically go straight across because then you can cause wrinkles. So I kind of do this and it pushes the air bubbles out. And um, I think, I think it's, I'm pretty happy. But this is only three <laughs> and it's 1230. I don't know. Maybe I started at 10. So two and a half hours, that's, that's a long time. Okay, we've started planning for the garden. So I thought I'd show you. So we bought some flocks. This is very similar to the one we bought last year, if not the same. So we picked up six more of these and the ones we planted last year are doing amazing. And then I found some gorgeous carnations. Look at how pretty they are. Now I only got three of those. And I don't really remember what these are. I'll let you know. But they are also a perennial and they're a nice tall one. And then I... I don't know what these are. I've never seen anything so extravagantly beautiful. Actually, I have. One other time, we bought something very odd, um, but it wasn't this. So those are also perennial. So we're going to put those around the pool, I think, because they, they're full sun. And then a sedum. These, um, I believe, well, I have to check what they were. 
as far as where they can be planted. I just love the color of those. And then these are an English country garden daisy. And then we picked up just two ferns. I mean, this is all the room we've got, so hopefully it works. Sorry for the lighting. I can't turn the electric on right now. Um, you can kind of tell where I've cut. I haven't cut all of it at the top at all. And I am not done. Um, and this is day two, and this is evening of day two. Now, yesterday, I will admit, I got three pieces up and I fell asleep on the couch. I was taking a break because you can't just go right to the next. You gotta give it a minute, especially if you're in certain spots to let it rest more. And anyway, so I'm within two panels of meeting my corner there. And I am sure since it's six o'clock, I am not gonna get to that tonight. But I am loving it. Oh, and when the lights are out, this is how you can see the overlap. See it? And when the lights are on, I never notice that. But that is, I mean, that's what it is. There's nothing you can do about it because that is how it comes. If you want your patterns to match, which did a pretty good job there, um, you have to slide it over in order for it to meet that. But what I can see <laughs> is... And when I started over here, um, this little guy, there's his bottom. And his bottom was still good there. And his bottom was still in about the same spot there. And then we got over here around all this cutting. And his bottom came up. And you can start to see a part of a tail and a paw. And while I still haven't cut this over here, I could see that we are going to see two paws and a tail. And by the time we get to the corner, you're going to see the entire guy. So it has gone up crooked, although when you look at it, it is not noticeably crooked on the edges. So that's how important it is. Um, and I love the way they've done this pattern because it's not so super straight. I mean, I can see these little like cone-shaped flowers going down. They still look good. And overall, my monkeys still look straight going up. Okay, I just thought I'd show you how this works. Um, oh, did I get, okay, no, that's glue. So I had to let this dry overnight. Even the glue here is still very wet, um, which is fine and it's good because you still can, you know, work on any, areas that are loose. Overall, the paper is dry right now. And so I've cut all the way to this edge. So I'm just gonna show you how easy it is. This is overnight dry. And I did this around, well, it's nice. There we go. Oh, one piece. <laughs> now, if I didn't cut it well, it won't come off, but I think I did. And I'm just using a little knife. And that's just excess glue there. Not a little knife. I'm using that wallpaper knife I showed you. So it's really simple. There you go. And I'll come in uh, with a wet cloth and clean that up. I still have to cut all of the top. And I've got to cut around here. But I did do this. I just haven't cleaned up right there. I wanted to try and get the lights and mirror back up last night, which we did. And I know it's a lot for you to be able to even see the mirror and stuff now. But um, And then I'm going to do that. But I don't know if that's going to make it on the video because it's going to take me some time. And I need my husband to take down the light. I don't really know anything about taking down that light. So... All right, here we go. Now, I did not do the top. I uh, want that top done. I just can't. This is a very tight space in here for ladders and especially something tall. I think um, I'm gonna see if I can hire that out. Um, and as you can tell, we have I specifically made it so I've got really a nice, rich, wide type of trim up there so 
even the ceiling paper is only going to go, you know, it's only going to get within about six inches of the edges or the corner. I love that. Um, and here we have it. So the board and batten in here is painted with a lacquer. I use Chantilly lace from Sherwin Williams throughout my house, my cabinets, my doors and everything. It's just a brighter white that I love. And um, we kind of talked about that another time where I just have a real strong sense of needing brightness in my house. And um, then the board and batten is probably about 4'11", something like that, tall. And then this is from Spinflower. This is a pre-pasted. It comes in different sizes. It comes in different patterns. Um, not, and I, when I say patterns, I mean like, well, let me see. Let me show you something. So if you're not familiar with Spoonflower, they print like you could. I, one of the reasons I held off so long in this bathroom is I was going to design my own paper. So you could use a um, app like, oh, I can't think of it right now, but there's some apps that you can use on your iPad. Procreate, I think it's called, and you could design or you could literally just take something that you have a license for from Kittle or um, Creative Fabrica. You can even use Canva for this. And um, there's ways where they teach you how to do it so that your patterns will match when it's printed. So that's what I was going to do. But when I saw this print on somebody else's channel, I was like, I love it. I love it. I immediately ordered, um, I found pillowcases and then I realized it was spoon flour. So not only did I buy that, but I bought these, these are little towels, um, that I usually have hanging in here. So you can see it's the same print. They just took out a lot of the background. And then this is the one that I have on my wall. And then this is a smaller version of it. I thank you for joining me today. I am totally, <laughs> let me just say this, I'm bored. I'm bored with what I had out for, because I, I started putting out a lot of the things that you have seen in the Easter tour. I started putting that out um, right after Christmas. I just didn't have all the bunnies and things in it when I turned it to Easter. So Easter was so early, I just felt like I had I had no choice but to get going on it. So um, I'm a little bored. And so yesterday I just went crazy and I did a tablescape. Now I'm not quite done with it, but that's what I'm gonna bring you um, on my next video. And a lot of you like it. Um, and I am working on the family room and kitchen. And it's probably about as far, well, I'll get the dining room done. I'm gonna get those, those rooms uh, refreshed with a little bit of a different look before our Kentucky Derby party on May 4th. So um, I'll be bringing you those. And of course, we're going to go back outside once the furniture is put together and show you that. So I hope you enjoy. And if you're new here, welcome. If you are not subscribed, I would love to have you subscribe. I also have Pinterest and um, Instagram at the same spot. I have a blog, you guys. Um, I don't I don't put much on it anymore, but I've left it up. It's like almost eight years old. Maybe it is eight years old. And on that blog, um, I did back eight years ago. So it is. Oh, my goodness. Uh, eight years ago, I did a Kentucky Derby series. So if anybody's wanting to throw a party, small or large, I've got Southern Eats. For the Kentucky Derby on there. I've got ha a, a history on hats and some stuff. Uh, probably the links don't work anymore, you guys. Uh, you know how that goes. But um, the invitations, I don't remember what else is in there, but I did read it myself and I thought, you know, this isn't too bad. So if you're interested, I did send somebody who was um, got so excited. She said, I'm, I'm throwing one. So she was excited to read it. And I guess, I guess she got some tips out of it. So thanks so much, you guys. Don't forget to give me a like and I will see you next time at your home, your happy place. Bye.